Hi, this is Charlie Hesse from Tropical Burning and welcome to this virtual tour of Cambodia and Laos. As some of you may know, I live in Thailand, which is a short distance from Cambodia. Cambodia is a lot less developed than Thailand and still retains a lot of very rare species which long went extinct in Thailand. Um, so if you're into searching for rare and endangered species and also interested in uh, ancient cultures, then uh, this may be the trip for you. We also offer a short extension to Laos at the end where we go looking for some recently discovered species. Let's start with a map of Cambodia. The capital city is Phnom Penh, but we're going to be starting the tour in Siem Reap, which is a cultural capital, just very close to Angkor Wat. From there, we're going to do a few little day trips and then set off exploring the north of the country and then going down, crossing the Mekong River and going down to the east of the country and then finishing the tour in Phnom Penh. Here's a Google Earth map of the area. Um, this is Cambodia in the center. It's bordered by Thailand to the west, Vietnam to the east, and Laos to the north. We are going to start the tour in the city of Siem Reap. Um, Siem Reap is a base to visit Angkor Wat. Um, it gets a lot of foreign tourists every year, so it has wonderful hotels and great food. There's a place called Pub Street that's got restaurants along its whole length and bars and a lot of street food. There's um, lots of these little tuk-tuks around and night markets. It's a really, uh, really vibrant place at night, so it's quite fun to visit. From Siem Reap, the next day we're going to head to Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat is just one temple um, in a huge city um, full of different temples. Um, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Angkor Wat is actually the, I think it's the largest religious building in the world. It's a really impressive place. This is a view of the front of the complex. Um, this is Angkor Wat at the back, very distinctive shape. It even appears on the, the Cambodian money. Um, this is also a place where a lot of people come at sunset to take pictures. I've done several tours to Cambodia, um, but I've also been on a family holiday there. Um, my son was very keen to be included in one of these talks, so I thought this was a good opportunity. This is as uh, my wife and my son about to explore the temple. So after being dropped off by your driver, you walk along a uh, long causeway, and then you can um, explore the outside of the complex. These very long walls are just covered in really intricate carvings that, just, that depict all sorts of interesting things from the past wars and fighting and all sorts of things. I'm obviously most interested in wildlife, so I love to sort of look for um, animals on these depictions. This is a Siamese crocodile, uh, which are no longer present in this area. It's a very rare species now in Asia. There's also quite a few birds. Here you can see one eating a fish. This may be a cormorant or a, a data. On the bottom of the picture, you can also see some monkeys. The monkeys are still very common around the temple buildings. There are depictions of birds that are no longer in the area, um, like these Saras cranes. Um, we will be traveling a little bit further afield to look for these later. And this is the Eld's deer. Uh, you can tell from the shape of its antlers, which is also no longer um, in the immediate area, although we will be looking for it a bit further away. This, I think, are probably uh, Asian barred owlets. It's not a bad depiction, really. And um, we can still see these around the outside of the temple complex. And uh, another owl that we can sometimes see is the brown bubuk, especially around dusk. We saw a picture of the front of the complex. Um, this is actually the back of the complex now. Um, it's much quieter. Um, you don't get many people um, coming back here. But you see um, it's surrounded by really nice habitats and really big trees. So it's actually really nice to take a break from the, um, from the cultural highlights here and then go and do a bit of birding too. This is a view of the inside, a little 360, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. From Angkor Wat, we're going to go to another temple nearby called Bayon. Um, Bayon is famous for having these huge faces carved into the temples. They're really pretty spectacular um, and some other nice intricate carvings there too. 
Um, there's all sorts of little nooks and crannies that you can uh, explore. There's some gates, and uh, we found one spot that had all these bats hanging down, and we identified this later as the black bearded tomb bat. Um, it's a good one for mammal listers. Um, there's also some nice birding nearby. One of the birds we're going to be looking for is the black baza. It's really one of the most beautiful raptors in the world. And um, down some of the quieter paths, we can also sometimes see forest wagtail. From Bayon, we're going to go to another temple called Ta Prom. Uh, Ta Prom is by far my favorite temple in the whole of Angkor. It's a temple that you might have seen in some films. This appeared in the movie Tomb Raider, but it's got um, some wonderful trees sort of growing over the, over the ruins, and it really uh, makes for some pretty amazing scenes. Um, this particular doorway, I think, had um, Angelina Jolie as Lara Croft sort of walking out of it. Um, here's a little 360 view of um, just outside Taprom. You can see it's just surrounded by all these big trees. Um, it's a wonderful place to look for parakeets. This is one species of parakeet that we can see here, the red-breasted parakeet, and you can also get a bigger Alexandrine parakeet. We'll take uh, another view. Um, this is some really nice carving here, um, and it just shows you some of the things that you could expect to see here. You see these huge trees just draped over the, the buildings and you just look up, up into the canopy. It's full of birds. It's just a really special place. There's also a nice little museum there and they've got some working demonstrations of how they actually lifted some of these huge rocks into place. I mean, somebody couldn't lift one of these rocks, but yeah, using a really clever system of sort of pulleys and levers, these heavy rocks can be just lifted up by one person. They would sort of chisel little holes in the rocks and put these little uh, wooden wedges and then tie them on and then lift them up on these uh, these poles but really uh, interesting stuff after finishing at uh, Angkor Wat we're gonna drive back to Siem Reap and there's a really big tree in town that's just covered in um, fruit bats which is quite a nice thing to uh, check out there's a couple of different species I think large flying fox and Lyle's flying fox so uh, add a few mammals to our list um, even in the daytime you sometimes see some of these huge um, bats flying around. Okay, the next place we're gonna visit is called ATT, Ang Trepeng Tamor. This was a huge dam that was built by the Khmer Rouge actually in the 70s um, and it was built by hand. But it's a nice place to look for water birds and also to explore some of the woodland nearby. This is one of the water birds that we can see there, the black necked stork. And some other common birds that we can find, things like uh, green beaters, and spotted owlets. Um, this is the kind of habitat you can see in this area. You see it's very open with just sort of dotted trees and we drive around um, scanning between the trees for some of our targets. This is one of the things we're going to be looking for, the endangered elves deer. Um, if you remember, we saw that on the carvings in uh, Angkor Wat. You see these very distinctive antlers. Another very rare bird we're going to be looking for is the Saras crane. This is fairly common in other places like India, but um, this is an endangered subspecies. Another good bird that we can look for in this area is the Oriental plover. It's also a nice area for raptors. Um, sometimes we can see uh, pied harriers or uh, black-winged kites. On another day trip from Siem Reap, we are going to go and check out uh, the lake of Tonle Sap. Um, Tonle Sap is Southeast Asia's largest um, lake. It's absolutely enormous. You can see it here, just south of Siem Reap. And it really changes size drastically during the year. Um, after the rainy season, it really fills up, expands to many times its surface area. But we're probably going to be visiting at the um, end of the dry season, so it's much smaller. So from Tonle Sap, we are going to um, take a boat across the lake um, to the wetland reserve of Prek Toll. You can see here there's, um, there's some small little channels and we're going to be exploring these channels by boat looking for water birds. This is one of the boats that we're going to be going in, these long tail boats. And the area is just full of water birds and huge numbers of cormorants and storks and herons. This is one of our targets, a spot-billed pelican. You can see those little spots going along the bill, but uh, a near-threatened species, quite rare. 
uh, really nice opportunities to see this bird in flight. A lot of different types of stalks as well. This is a painted stalk. You see with this beautiful yellow bill and these pink tail feathers. Um, again, nice opportunities to get flight shots. This is the endangered greater adjutant stalk. You see it looks kind of like a jabiru or marabou, but with this sort of bright yellow neck and big um, red wattles. Here's one in flight. There's some nice raptors there, like this grey-headed fish eagle. This is a protected area, but it is used quite a bit by local people for fishing. You can see them uh, fishing with nets here, catching things like this um, garami. And on their nets, sometimes you'll get um, little herons uh, waiting for a few tidbits. The area is also good for some more stalky birds, like this um, ruddy-breasted crake and uh, greater kukul. You can also see things like uh, common kingfisher there. On the way back, we may have a chance to see one of the floating villages. Um, these are really fascinating places. You even get little shops that people come by in their boat and buy their stuff and then move out of the way and the next boat comes in. But yeah, really uh, interesting. And boats are just the way that people move around here. You know, they don't have cars, they just have a boat. Then the kids going off to school in their boat. From Prektol, we're going to go back to Siem Reap, and then the next day we are going to start our little road trip. The first place we're going to visit is called the Florican Grasslands. This is on the floodplain of Tonle Sap. You see at the very uh, high water mark it reaches uh, these areas. Um, and they were originally uh, natural grasslands, but now a lot of them have been converted to agriculture. This is a sort of area we're going to be driving around along these dust roads. You see it's very dry and open. And we're going to be looking for a few of the remaining um, natural grasslands. On the way in, we may see some birds like the Oriental Pratting Coal, um, or even if we're lucky, a small button quail. This is our target. It's called the Bengal Florican. This bird is found in India, and there's also a small population here in Cambodia. We arrive early in the morning and start scanning around for these little black necks sticking out of the grass. Um, sometimes we'll see them flying up. Uh, the males have got these very big shaggy plumage on the head and these really bright white wings. But uh, yeah, really special bird and it's actually a critically endangered species. Um, Cambodia's got several critically endangered species that we're going to be looking for on this tour. From the Florican grasslands, we're going to drive north um, to the uh, place called Tamat Bawi. Um, this is an area with a very sort of open, dry, deciduous forest. Here's a little 360 view of the kind of habitat that we're going to be exploring. On the way, we're going to be stopping at some stakeouts for some birds, like this um, collared falconet. Here you can see one really going to town on a cicada. Close up, they look really ferocious birds, but you know, they're tiny. You can fit them in the palm of your hand. This is another bird that we're going to be looking for, the white rumped falcon. Um, this is one that we saw. Um, it was getting mobbed by a, uh, a shrike. Uh, this is actually the female with this very uh, beautiful kind of rusty back and crown. This is where we're heading to, the Tamat Bawi Community Eco Lodge. Um, this is run um, by the local community and for the local community. They um, benefit directly from it. It uh, used to be very basic, but they've, um, they've improved the accommodation somewhat. It's still fairly rustic. This is a bird that we're going to be looking for. It's the giant ibis, another critically endangered species. Um, it is found in the dry deciduous forest, but in places where there's ponds where they uh, forage. Got some video footage here of um, the giant ibis, a really strange looking bird. I mean, it's absolutely enormous. Everybody knows how big an ibis is. This is like twice the size. It's got this very distinctive bare head with all these kind of folds of skin on the back. Uh, yeah, and they use their long bills to sort of probe in the mud here. But yeah, a really amazing bird. There's probably only um, about a hundred pairs of these birds left in the world. So I mean, it's a really, you know, one of the world's rarest birds. Some of the other birds found here include um, the woolly neck stork, which is quite rare in Asia. And another critically endangered bird, the um, white-shouldered ibis. Again, just a few hundred individuals of these found. Uh, these are pretty well staked out by the local guides, who are excellent. Um, and they know which trees they roost in at night. Um, this area is very good for owls as well. This is a brown wood owl. 
um, and the brown fish owl. There's many species of owls here and we um, usually see quite a few of them. Another bird that we can see in the area is a um, Chinese Franklin. It's got a really distinctive call. This area is also good for woodpeckers. This is the great slady woodpecker, the largest woodpecker in the world. And another one we can see is a rufous-bellied woodpecker. There's probably 10 or 12 species of woodpeckers in this area. Um, another local rarity is this pale-capped pigeon, which come down in the afternoon to drink on some of these ponds. So we sort of wait at certain spots and, uh, and wait for them to come in. The dry deciduous forests have some little areas of bamboo, and we'll explore some of these for some specialties like this um, Indo-Chinese blue flycatcher. Okay, from Tamat Bawi, we're going to move um, a little bit further east to um, Okoki. You can see this is a little bit more uh, thick forest here. There's no lodge here, so we're going to be camping, but our grand agent really uh, does a good job with the camping. We get very nice food and these comfortable uh, safari tents. It's, it's pretty hot during the day and there's no air conditioning, but uh, yeah, at uh, dawn and dusk it gets nice and cool and you get some really nice sunsets. Okoki is famous for having some photographic blinds. This is my boss, Keith Barnes, who came along on one tour. Um, and there's some really rare birds that we're going to be looking for. While we wait for our targets, some of the commoner birds that we might see uh, include the red jungle fowl. Here's a non-breeding plumage um, Chinese pond heron, which is nice to watch. And we probably also see some white-breasted uh, water hens. This is our main target, the white-winged duck, another endangered species. Um, here you can see when it flaps its wings, it shows you all the, the white in the wing. And here's some footage of this uh, very rare bird. Um, yeah, you can get very close to this bird and get really good views. So this was a really wonderful experience. Here you can see it um, feeding on some uh, aquatic vegetation. And again, we've got our friends, the uh, white-breasted water hens um, in the background. We may also get some mammals um, coming in. Um, this is a wild boar here. Um, they're very exciting, these blinds. You can really, you feel like you could see anything there. You know, you never know what's going to come in. So it's, um, it's really fun uh, waiting. This is another endangered species. This is the Indo-Chinese silvered langur. Um, which we saw from the blind as well. This is the adult here with this sort of silver fur and then there's a, um, a young one at the back with this sort of more kind of ginger color. The forests around Okoki are really good for um, broadbills. This is a banded broadbill and you can also see the black and red broadbill and other nice forest birds like this um, orange breasted trogon and the banded kingfisher. It's a really interesting place at night. We're going to go out and do some owling. Uh, several different owl species and other um, night birds, night jars, frog mouths. Um, but yeah, this is one of the main targets at night is the uh, oriental bay owl, a really weird looking relative of the barn owl. Okay, from Okoki, we're going to go uh, a little bit further and we're going to go to a place called Vil Cruz. You can see this is a combination of um, woodland and open grasslands. Um, again, we're going to be setting up camp here. Um, these are some of our other tents and our vehicles. We're going to be going to a vulture restaurant. Um, you may know that the Asian vultures have suffered terribly um, in the past years. There's a veterinary drug called uh, diclofenac, um, which is given to domestic animals. Um, and this affects the livers of the vultures. So the Asian vultures have gone down by more more than you know 99 percent and there's very very few left um, just in southeast asia there's a few clinging on there's probably a few hundred but um we're going to be looking for some of these there's three different species we're going to be hoping to see this is a slender build vulture and then uh just below and on the side is a white rumped vulture and then this really beautiful uh, red headed vulture which is very similar to the uh, lapid face vulture of africa a really good opportunity to see some more uh, rare birds. All three of these species are now considered critically endangered. Our visit paid for um, a cow to be uh, provided um, for these extremely rare birds. 
you often see things like this on safari in Africa, but these are not everyday scenes from, uh, from, from Southeast Asia. I mean, it's really pretty amazing. Here's a golden jackal that's come in and is chasing away all these um, vultures. There's a real uh, hierarchy at these, um, at these sites. Really impressive stuff. You can see the white rumps of the vultures as they, as they fly up. But this is quite a remote site, um, so you can really um, see some interesting mammals here sometimes as well. Let's hear this uh, golden jackal starting to feed on the cow. Yeah. You can see these um, vultures all just waiting patiently for the, for the jackal to finish. But uh, yeah, the jackal doesn't really tolerate their presence much. When he goes off, they all sort of jump back in again. <laughs> It's a bit more of a close-up. You can see this really interesting looking uh, red-headed vulture there. He's got a, it's a much bigger bird with a stronger bill that can uh, rip open carcasses. Also in this area, we may see some birds like the um, Burmese shrike. Um, and again, we'll be going out at night looking for some owls. Um, this is a fairly common bird around here called the uh, Oriental Scops Owl. Okay, from Veal Cruz, we've got a long drive now and we're gonna be going down to the Mekong River at a place called Kampi, where we're gonna do um, a little boat ride. Um, this is what it looks like on the ground. Um, we're gonna be in, in one of these boats and um, exploring some of these um, little river islands. This is what the, the river looks like here. And our boat, and we're scanning for and the Irrawaddy River Dolphin. This is another critically endangered species, quite a small cetacean. Um, they don't jump all the way out like some dolphins, but you'll just see them sort of, um, see their sort of dorsal fin coming out of the water. Sometimes you get the head coming out, sort of uh, pinkish gray color, but a really rare animal. And we're also gonna be looking for a very rare and recently discovered bird called the Mekong Wagtail. Uh, nearby, we're going to be looking for some um, Asian golden weavers as well, which is also a, a near threatened species. Okay, from Kampi, we've got another drive. We're going to be heading to the east of Cambodia. Um, and you can see there's some sort of low hills here. Here we start getting some birds which are um, better known in Vietnam, but some really interesting stuff. We started at a place called Dak Dam, it's at about 3,000 feet elevation. Here we can see things like a mountain hawk eagle um, and a crested serpent eagle. And there's some nice forest birds like red-headed um, trogon. This is a locally common bird called the Indo-Chinese barbet, which was split from the uh, black brow barbet. It's also a nice place for a silver-breasted broadbill. Um, often see um, pintailed green pigeons there. Other birds like uh, Asian fairy bluebird and some beautiful uh, sunbirds like um, the crimson sunbird. Um, in this area, we're also gonna be exploring a lower elevation site called Sema. This is a protected area, There's still quite a bit of forest here. Um, one morning, we are gonna be going early to a stakeout um, for another endangered species called the green peafowl. Uh, they know where this bird sleeps, so we go there at dawn and wait for it to become active and then try and spot it in a tree. Around here, we also sometimes see some other endangered um, primates like this buff-cheeked gibbon um, and also another endangered um, primate called the black shanked duke. Um, we may be lucky enough to see one of these slender-tailed tree shrews. The main uh, bird target in this lower area is the Germain's peacock pheasant. Another species we're going to be looking for is a red vented barber, which is quite common around here. And, and some other woodpeckers like this uh, black and buff woodpecker. Okay, from Sema, we are gonna um, drive down to um, the capital of Phnom Penh, but we're gonna stop just on the outskirts um, to look for a very recently described species. Um, I couldn't find a, a photo available to use. This is just a little illustration. It's called the Cambodian tailor bird. We actually saw this before it had been uh, described. We were told that it was, um, it was being described at the time. 
um, when it was all kind of hush hush. But now it's um, it's been described as the Cambodian tailor bird, Cambodia's um, uh, endemic species. Okay, so that is the end of the main tour. From here, we're going to fly up to um, the neighboring country of Laos and its capital, Vien Tien, which is also on the Mekong River, but much higher up. Laos was a, a, a French colony and it's got lots of sort of French colonial architecture. It's a very quaint place. It's almost like stepping back in time. It feels like Thailand might have been sort of 50 years ago, um, but it's a really wonderful place to visit. We're going to do a little bit of birding um, upstream on the Mekong. Um, not too far away. You see the river here sort of splits into lots of um, river islands. Um, this is a little um, view from the Thai side, but you sort of get the idea of the habitat here. Um, you can see all these little river islands over on the other side. Um, and you see all this long grass growing here. This is where our target likes to uh, hang out. Some of the birds that we might find here um, are little ringed plover and the very cute um, small pratting coal, which likes these little rocky um, islands. We might see some um, flying around. Other common birds we might see are uh, chestnut-headed bee-eater. But yeah, this is our main target. It's called the Jordan's bush chat. Um, it likes this sort of long grass um, along rivers, but it's a very uh, uncommon, strangely uncommon bird, you know, because when you look at the habitat, it doesn't look to be much special about it. But yeah, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see that. Okay, from there, we're going to be going um, east to a, an area of limestone called Ban Nahin. There is a road that crosses over the uh, Anamite Mountains um, and we'll be able to access some of these uh, little rocky outcrops. This is a little uh, view from a viewpoint up there. You can see these really little jagged limestone peaks there. Um, really interesting geologically. So in recent years, there's been some very uh, exciting um, discoveries here. I think in sort of about 2009, uh, some bird watchers came here and they spotted a bulbul that looked very strange. It had a kind of bare face. It looked like almost it was kind of sick. Um, there were some people that had actually seen it a few years earlier and they thought it, was, it looked a little strange, but they didn't do anything. I think their friends made fun of them saying, you know, oh yeah, maybe it's a new species. And it actually was. And it's this thing. It's called a bare-faced bulbul. It was described just in 2009. And it likes to perch upon these little uh, limestone rocky pinnacles here and they feed in the little fruiting trees nearby. But uh, just amazing that, that a bird could have gone unknown, you know, along a main road. It's just incredible. Um, another big ornithological rediscovery this time was the sooty babbler, which uh, this was discovered in about 1920, and then it wasn't seen again until 1994, 74 years later. Um, and now it's fairly well staked out along this road. Very strange looking bird, looks almost like he's wearing goggles. Um, this bird is also found in uh, neighboring Vietnam. And our third bird that we're going to be um, searching for is the limestone leaf warbler, also described in around uh, 2010. Okay, from Ban Nahin, we're going to head back to um, the capital of Vientiane, where we're going to finish the tour. Um, you may decide to hang around in Vientiane for a couple of days. There's lots of uh, interesting cultural sites to see. This is Vientiane's oldest temple called uh, Wat Si Saket. This is the Pa Tat Luang Stupa, which is the symbol of Laos. Another nice thing to do is just sit on the banks of the Mekong and drink a coffee and uh, watch the world go by. It's a very relaxing place. Yeah, be a nice way to wind down at the end of the tour. Okay, that's the end. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this tour. Um, it's one of my favorites. And please check out my other um, virtual tours online and also from the other guides. There's some really interesting places there. Okay, thanks for joining me and see you next time.